tatanungin kung kaya kong higitan, kailangan kong tanggapin ang kaya ko. And hello, sports fans! This is Kenito Hanson. And I'm Diane Castillejo. Get ready to uncover the future of Philippine sports. And let's navigate and break down this game. And kick it back with our super inspiring athletes. Well, we have a very historical, no, monumental episode um, tonight. And we're coming to you live from Tokyo. But our guests are in Manila. And they happen to be the combination that is now the sports face of the Philippines. Diane, yes. who do we have as guests? Well, we have none other than Team HD. She, they are here with us. This woman has literally lifted, literally lifted the spirits of the entire nation. And she is here with us, not alone, because Heidi Lindias has said it over and over again. It is not her alone that caused her to win. It is her team. And also joining us, a key member of Team HD, none other than Coach Julius Naranjo. Woo, woo. Okay, well, sports fans, if you have any comments, you want to reach out to Heidi Lynn, you want to reach out to Coach Julius, you want to reach out to Diane or myself, please send us your comments. And we'll try our very, very best to bring them out so we can answer what you have in mind. If you have got questions, send them over. So Heidelin and Juniors are going to be with us for the next half hour or 45 minutes. So please share this page to all your friends and family and join in this conversation with us with our only gold medalist. I'm so proud to say it. We have a gold medalist from the Philippines, none other than Heidelin Diaz and Julius. Welcome to Play It Right. Hi. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hi, hi, Dylan, and hi, Coach Julius. You guys must be super busy. Yeah. This must be, Diane, this is probably their 1,001 interview. Yeah. Yeah. Ito, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pang ilang interview nyo na ito, siguro mga hindi nyo na mabilang, ano? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so, um, Haydelin, you and Julius have been in quarantine. I believe this is your 10th day already, tama ba? This is your 10th and last day, am I right? No. I don't know anymore. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we stopped counting. <laughs> oh, we stopped counting. So, yes. I mean, I know you've had all this time for yourself. Parang kind of strange kasi from all the celebration and the victory here biglang napunta kayo sort of in isolation in your room has it been, has it given you time to rest to reflect uh what have you been doing in your separate rooms at the sofitel in manila idly nikaw muna um ang ginawa ko ang alam ko nakapag training na ako straight three days so masaya ako huh? but, yes um Napaka-strict naman ni Coach Julius. Pina-training ka agad ng gold medalist, ha? Then, after that, um, ano ba? Ang daming interviews, eh. Dahil lahat na nakapag-adapt sa new normal. So, ngayon lahat tayo nasa Zoom na. So, guru nung first day ko dito, 14 um, Zoom interviews yun. Tapos today din marami. Tapos in between, may, may school ako na uh, ano, may klase ako kanina. Wow. <laughs> what about you, Julius? How have you been uh, spending your time there in the hotel? Uh, for me, I've just been catching up because I I have a few athletes uh, that I work with remotely. So uh, during the week of the competition, I wasn't able to look at all their um, their lifting and so i needed to go back and really um do the coaching part of it and um just catching up with all of the backed up work that i needed to do um during the week of the olympics so it's just uh pretty much work and then um doing some uh, home workouts to keep me busy 
um, so that I can stay active and get back into the gym. Mm. Do you have weights there, Heidelin? Paano ka nakapag workout? Body weight lang? Um, hindi. Um, nakapagpadala ang PSC ng weights dito in my treadmill. So, na- wow, you have a treadmill there? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, um, kasi mahirap pag nasa quarantine ka, pag walang ginagawa, especially for me na isang atleta na I train 7 to 9 session a week, tapos biglang walang training, hindi pwede sa akin yan. Pero Heidi, you just won the gold medal. You've been training so hard for I don't know how many years. Didn't you just want to like, ay, relax muna, no, no workout or hindi? Um, hindi, mas lalong hindi ako makapag-relax kung wala akong <laughs> hindi ako nag, nag, napapawisan, hindi ako nagte-training. Uh, hi, Dylan. Um, okay, nakabalik na kayo sa Maynila. Pero yung Olympics hindi pa tapos. Meron pa tayong mga Pilipino, mga ka-teammate mo na lumalaban pa. Um, sa lahat ng mga sports sa Olympics, meron ko bang sinusundan na favorite sport outside of weightlifting, of course? At sino yung mga close mo sa Philippine contingent? Um, alam mo yung sinusundan ko naman na sports, lahat ng mga may Pilipino eh. Lahat na mm-hmm. yung pinapanood ko. So, yung close ko dyan, si na Yulo, si Yumir, si Nesty, tapos si um, EJ, tapos um, si, no, si na Yuka, Saso, saka si Bianca, tapos si Ando. Tapos iba nakita ko naman, future ko sila. Okay, hindi pa nga tapos yung kampanya natin. Um, buhay pa si Carlo Paalam, Yumir Marshall, si Bianca, at saka sa Yuka. Ano naman ang uh, encouraging words na pwede mong sabihin para sa kanila? Um, alam kong kaya nila eh. Huwag silang sumuko. Uh, si ate nakakuha ng gold. So, ito ate talaga, no? Talagang ate na ako. So, si ate <laughs> na- <laughs> kaya na rin ito. And hindi na yan questionable kasi nandito na. So kaya nyo rin, paniwala nyo sarili nyo. And nandito lang kami, mga Pilipino, nag-cheer sa inyo. And ipagpa-pray namin kayo. Yeah. Um, Hi, Lynn, yung mental toughness mo. Um, yun ang isa sa mga kahagahanga na katangian mo. And uh, marami nagsasabi, of course, we don't want to put anyone down, sa ilang-ilan mga athletes who were not able to deliver a podium finish sa Olympics para nagkulang sila sa mental toughness. Do you feel that this ingredient of sports science is something we should really put a focus and emphasis on? Because iba din kung paglabas mo to compete, ang feeling mo, pwede kang manalo eh. Sa tingin mo? Para sa akin, yes. Um, kailangan talaga i- ano, makita yung importansya ng sports science, yung support system. Kasi nga, um, at the end of the day, lalo-lalo na sa Olympics, yung pressure dyan sobrang taas, yung expectation. Kung hindi natin alam kung paano natin i-manage yun, medyo mahirap. At hindi, hindi ka kayanin ng isang atleta lang na, uh, hindi ka kayanin ng atleta na, alam mo yung mag- ay anyway, gagawin ng lahat maging nutritionist maging sports psychologist wag isip di ba ang daming isipin kaya kailangan talaga ng people behind them para sila focus sa anong kailangan nilang gawin yeah. coach, coach Julius what do you say about that um <clears throat> <Hello again. laughs> Your mental toughness oh yes um sorry Mental toughness is is so important for athletes to have because um, if you, I mean, not a lot of people understand that the physical aspect is is maybe I, I would put seven at least seventy percent, but the last thirty percent is that mental. Uh, it's when you get to that point of competing, and really, it's 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 such an important thing to have. I say, um, you know, it, it also takes years of experience to, de- to develop, to, to build. So I think um, in terms of mental toughness, um, you, you have to go through your failures in order for you to succeed. And, you know, Heidelin in, in her 19 years, she's been through many failures and um, also has succeeded many times. 
So this is this is where you just have to go through that the process of experiencing in order to to develop that mental toughness. Continuing the subject on mental toughness, as we know, nakita nyo dito sa Olympics na talagang ibang klase ang level, ang physical ability at ang kakayanan. But what really spells the difference is really the mind that separates the good from the great. And you know, Heidelin, talking to you over all these years, I mean, you... It was not, you did not always believe in yourself. I remember talking to you, I think that was in the SEA Games, when you were helping uh, one of the, our male boxers. Uh, I, I, for, I forgot. Hindi ka, you were not competing, but you were just helping him there. I remember sabi mo sa akin, ate, hindi ko alam kung kaya ko pa. Kasi like, you know, like you really actually doubted yourself. And... Yeah. Am, am I right in saying that one of the things that really helped you was to have that mental coach? Can you please tell us kung ano ba yung ginagawa yung mga session with your mental coach and how important was Julius being with you to talk to you, to be there, to talk to you during the times when you doubted whether you still had it in you to continue training and to win that Olympic gold that you dreamed about so long? So I just want to say like, nung 2000, uh, last 2000, no, Asian Games 2021, last April, di ba, hindi ako nakapag-perform. Um, nang maayos, I was fourth place then and I realized like, the whole team realized like, yeah, it's, you need to do the mental preparation already and it's like, I just have four months to prepare for three to four months to prepare for Olympics. And I accept the challenge that I need to have a session with Doc Karen. Uh, Doc Karen is the sports psychologist. Um, yeah, we have every week session and every week I um, she she's trying to tell me everything like, I need to do my best every day, 1% um, progress, 1% progress every day. Then every week also we have like um, training na parating ginagawa ko yung best or snatch clean and jerk para then ginagamit ko yung shoes ko, ginagamit ko yung cycling, everything na magagamit, gagamitin ko sa laro. Para pagdating sa laro, hindi na ako maninibago. Na bago kasi to. Or hindi na ako maninibago na makita yung weights na yung puro red hindi na ako manibago kasi ginagawa ko sa training at ginagawa ko yung best everyday. Pagdating sa laro, yung best ko, automatic na. Then yung ginagawa din ni Coach Julius para ma-monitor or siya yung coach na before ng Asian Championship, aminin ko, um, I used to be so stubborn and I'm like, I'm always complaining. I don't want to do this. I have competition. Why I have to kill myself? I need to, you know, I need to do less. But mm -hmm. after the Asian Championship, and I was like, yeah, you're right. I'm wrong. I need to do my best. I need to, you know, I need to do um, your training now. I believe in you. <laughs> I just yeah, have. I, <laughs> I remember you said to uh, to us after the Asian Championships. Uh, you're, you said it in the interview. You said, okay, guys, you have to kill me now. You said those yeah. exact words. So, pero, um, Heidelin, I want to, so you had weekly sessions with uh, Dr. with Karen, correct? Yeah. Motivating yeah. you. Now, um, what about uh, with Julius? Like, how important, ano yung mga sinasabi niya sa'yo? Because, you know, to have mental toughness, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, it's not just believing in yourself, but it's also, uh, you know, as we're hearing it so often now, uh, mental health. Like Simone Biles was saying, you know, she's really suffering from mental health problems. Um, yung, yung Julius being there to talk to you as a friend, as a coach, was that also uh, important to you? Uh, how did it help you? For me, it's important, especially during those, you know, 19 months away from family, 19 months in Malaysia, and yeah, it's quite hard. If he's not there and Coach Gao, I don't know how can I survive my, you know, my journey there in Malaysia. And good thing they're there where I can talk and who helped me, who, who you know, uh, when I want to eat, uh, um, they are 
there to support me and you know um i really need that especially those moments Ginito, I wanted to ask whether they actually ever fought. Nag-away ba kayo? Because you're saying you were stubborn. Julius, what were some of the things that you were telling to do, Heidelin, that she didn't want to do? And how do you make her do what she doesn't want to do? Uh, I think, like, most of it is um, just, like, running, you know? Um, the conditioning aspect, really, um, of the conditioning aspect of our training. Because... Um, I, I realized that, especially like in competition and in her training, if she's not conditioned well, then she doesn't recover well. So she, if she if she's in competition and, for instance, uh, we get pushed by the opponent to go first instead of um, going at our own pace, we need to be ready. So like things like that where I have force her to do sprints faster, or I force her to run faster or more. You know, or a little bit more uh, intensity. Uh, she, of course, uh, complains uh, a lot. <laughs> so, yeah. And also, course, I time my sleep, right? My rest time, I time it for one minute. Yeah. Recovery. Mm. Yeah. Recovery. Yeah. Coach Jewel, you see the thing. Oh, yes. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Please. Oh, no. I was just saying it's. I, I also tell her, like, you know, I'm doing the training too, I'm running with you. So you know, mm -hmm. it's like I'm leading by example. So okay. it's I have, it's like no excuses. <laughs> I cannot complain because he's doing also. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Dilin and Coach Julius. This is the last uh, um, issue concerning mental health, no, um, and sports psychology. Yung visualization. Ginagawa pa ni Coach. Uh, Julius yun para sa'yo, and Doc Karen, yung visualization of what's gonna happen um, to keep your frame of mind focused on the objective. Is that part of it? Uh, yeah, um, my visualization ako at ay, may mga ako na ko eh, dream board. May dream board ako, then may mga sulat din ako ng why I'm doing this and that. Uh, may mga ganun ako eh, para may uh, para magkaroon ako ng more on direction Kasi kailangan yun eh. Uh -huh. What okay, would you um, like? Ano yung mga yeah. sinusulat mo? <laughs> Siyempre yung... You always talk about the why. Like, what what's what was your why? Um, Siyempre, dahil mahal kong ginagawa ko. Mahal ko yung um, um, weightlifting. Ito yung sports na binigay sa akin ni God. Then, mahal ko ang Pilipinas. Then... Um, yung family ko, it's for my family and for myself and for the Team HD na nandyan. Hindi ako iniwan. Okay, let's talk about your Olympics uh, performance. Your fourth, your fourth Olympics. Um, at saka yung parang rivalry ninyo between you and the Chinese gymnast si Liao. Um, just to go back in 2019 sa so World Championships, Nakabuhat si Liao ng 227. You took third place, 214. Tapos dun sa Uzbekistan last April, bumuhat siya ng 222. Tapos bumuhat ka ng 212. Tito naman sa Tokyo Olympics, para nakita ko, hindi masyadong ambitious si Liao. Parang conservative. Sa snatch, 92, 97, uh, 92, 95, 97. Tapos, you tried to lift 99. You settled for 97. Pareho kayo. Tapos, in the clean and jerk, you know, parang mano a mano kayo. 118, tapos ikaw 119. 123, tapos 124. Tapos, bumuha siya ng 126. And you needed to surpass that. You gave yourself three more kilos to lift. Um, Siya ba, siya ba yung parang pwede mong ituring yung biggest rival mo? At saka, kayo pa ni Liao, pagkaibigan din outside of weightlifting? Um, hindi ko alam kung magkaibigan kami kasi after company. <laughs> Pero ako, um, siya yung tinitignan ko eh. Siya yung parang gusto kong talunin to. Gusto ko tong, um, ayun, gusto kong talunin. Gusto kong, I mean, parang pangarap lang eh. Alam mo yun na Parang imposible kung makita mo yung numbers na um, 
from last 2019, nag 240 na ako, tapos last Asian Championship, nag 212 total ako, tapos siya nasa 224 to 222. So, yung total niya medyo mataas. 10 kilos yung pagitan namin. Parang imposible sa iba, kahit sa Malay, uh, sa China, akala nila um, hindi ko magawa ang 127. Pero Eh, nagawa ko with the help of my team. Tapos syempre the, with the strategies to coach Julius with the help also with the team. Sila, sila, sila talaga 'yon. And ako ginawa ko yung part ko which is to lift that weight. Yung uh, yung sequence ng lifting, Hydelin. Um marami kasi nagtatanong, paano nangyari 'yon that nauna si Liao tapos ikaw ang nahuli? Um how is that part of your strategy? Yes, yeah, yeah, Coach yeah. Julius, if you could explain that, kung ano nangyari in that part when in the last, the, Heidelin had the last say. Um, si Liao um, picked it up and she had her final um, lift and it was up to Heidelin to either match it or surpass it. Paano nangyari yung strategy, tra, strategy na yun? Uh, For our strategy kasi, um, we wanted to keep it at a one kilo advantage. We wanted them to go um, first, or we, we were the ones that were pressuring them to go first. Um, I think that um, the opponents did not, did not know um, how strong Heidelin was based on her past performances. Because in reality, Heidelin's biggest rival is Heidelin Diaz. It's not any other country, any other lifter. It's Heidelin Diaz. That's her biggest opponent. Why? Not because so Heidelin has... Not Coach Julius. has... <laughs> maybe me, me too. <laughs> but, wow, but we, really, we have competitions in training. Yeah. yeah what? Oh, yeah. No, because uh, when we train, we always compete against each other. I always uh, push her to to do more in training when so I live and she lives and then we go head to head. So it's just a test to see how willing she's able to push herself. But uh, back to what I was saying, um, yeah. Madeline's biggest opponent is herself uh, because physically she has all the tools to succeed. Physically, she has all the, the uh, she, physically she has all the tools. Uh, she has all the experience. The only thing is her mental, her mental capacity. So, um, our training leading up to this was um, uh, part of it was physical, but mostly it was all mental training, trying to get her confident in herself because that's the only thing lacking. And with that strategy, with the 126, 127, the opponent did not know. Um, the opponent did not think Heidelin could do 127. So they took the, the con I think they had a, a good strategy where they, they knew, the opponent knew their athletes capabilities the coaches and they played it the best way they could uh but at, in the end Heidelin prevailed she beat herself you know she was able to to know that she was able to do it and right when she had the clean at 127 I I knew then that she would jerk it because Heidelin has um one of the best if not the best uh jerk technique in um her weight category Okay. I noticed the commentator was saying that she had such a very low lunge, right? Like from the from the lift and then the lunge, she really lunged low. And, you know, like I saw such a different demeanor in Heidelin as compared to the Asian Championships. Can I know what did you actually tell her, Julius, before she went up the stage to lift a weight that she's never lifted before, she said in training. She never. She's always tried one twenty seven. She never did. Can you can you share with us what did you tell her? Did you? Uh, wh what is it? What? I I said, I said one motion. It's all you. I mean, we're here already. Let's have fun. Do you, you know? You know your capabilities. And then I made her touch the the pendant or the. The thing to say this is all the prayers yeah the the uh, pendant i said this is all the prayers that everyone has for you let's do it for them and 
yeah there the yeah uh, this one yeah. because it's remind me the prayers of all the filipino people uh who pray for my competition they uh they uh they give me like uh they pray for nine days nubina yeah and i'm like thank you i'm thankful for them and yeah um at that moment i'm just like thankful to god because i was able to do it because the pressure is so high in olympics yeah hi dilin alam mo ikaw na ngayon ang inspirasyon ng ating mga atleta na natitira dito every time kinito and i talk to them yumir carlo bianca yuka even kaloy before he did it after he lost he said uh kasi si ate hi dilin natalo rin siya dati pero bumalik siya sabi nga ni kaloy sa akin na you know, he learned from you na pang, you did it on your fourth Olympics. So he still had the parang uh, hope na maka, makakayanan niya. Um, and then EJ, of course, missed it of, on his on his uh, first Olympics yesterday. Anong pwede mong sabihin sa ating mga atleta na who didn't make it and who are probably feeling bad just like you did in the last Olympics? Um, gusto ko lang sabihin na uh... It takes me for Olympics para maiwi ang gold medal in the Philippines. Um, maraming trials, maraming failures, and maraming challenges na pinagdaanan. So, siguro gamitin nila itong, kung hindi man sila nakapag-perform ng maayos, gamitin nila ito as a learning point or a stepping, sto a stepping step para ma-achieve nila yung gold medal next time. Sa nakita ko sa performance ni EJ at sa kani Yung maganda yung performance nila. Sila yung first na Pilipino na makapag-qualify sa fall, fall ball sa tapos nakapag-final sa gymnastic. Malaking bagay na yun. That's um, oh, ang next is, um, nagkaroon na sila ng experience. Ganito pala sa Olympics, next time mas prepared na ako. Um, Mag-prepare na ako mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, ganun. <laughs> Dapat prepared ka talaga pagdating sa Olympics. Pero so, again, um, proud ako sa kanila. Kasi naka, nakarating sila, first Olympic pa lang nila, nandiyan na eh. Nasa finals na sila at uh, ang galing, ang galing nila. Yeah, that's true because gymnastics and pole vault are very, very difficult sports. And EJ was actually the only Asian in the 14 out in the 14 that made it to the finals. And Kaloy is, I think Kenito, he was also the only Asian there in the finals of the, well, of the vault anyway. But, um... Hi, Deline. You know, you've told me in the past the Olympics would be your last. But you achieved your goal. <laughs> now you're saying, hindi pa, you want more. What's what's next for you? Uh, actually, um, hindi naman sa I want more. Siguro hin ayoko lang mag, um, mag give up after, you know, after winning. Hindi tayo ganun eh, as an athlete na after winning, um, magsistop na. Hangat kaya ko maglalaro ako. So maglalaro ako World Championship after that Sea Games then after that um hopefully Asian Games then titingnan ko kung kaya ng katawan. Yun. Tuloy. Pag hindi, tignan ko rin kung paano yung qualifying for Paris 2024 kasi iba na naman yung qualifying, baka mas mahirap. <laughs> what about yung training sa Malaysia? Babalik ba kayo sa Malaysia? Or will you want to train somewhere else? Jules. Julius. Julius. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think, you know, uh, we want to go back to Malaysia also because we want to um, give back. Uh, we were nice. training together with some of the kids there, the grassroots there, and the kids are so, they're so willing to learn and they want to learn and, um, you know, we, uh, you know, Malaysia, Malaysia was our second home for the last 19 months, was it, Heids? Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, you know, it's just our way of giving back because um, I think if, if we didn't, we weren't able to um, go to Malacca and train in the countryside in Jasin, um, you know, that was a big part of like just keeping us focused and also allowing us to continue with the advocacy of, you know, really spreading weightlifting no matter, you know, wherever we are, we want to share our influence and really inspire people to be the best weightlifters or the best people that they can be. Yeah. Before this show, Heidelin, um, meron akong tinanong sa'yo, 
um, it's about your education sa La Salle St. Benilde. Um, you have just about a year left before you get your degree, business management. Ano mga negosyong naiisip mo? Um, maybe after your weightlifting or even while you're still doing weightlifting. Is there something um, that your heart tells you you want to be involved in this in terms of a business? Uh, siguro kung, kung gusto kong gumawa ng business, gagawa ako ng cafe. Because <laughs> I love coffee. I love to, you know, cake. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and then, uh, siguro gym din, pero titignan namin kasi syempre as a business, nag, uh, nag-study ako ng business management. Ang daming kailangan isipin eh sa business. Um, parang may limang aspekto para bago ka mag-desisyon. So, pag-desisyon naman muna namin, titignan namin yung costing and um, yeah, yun know, opportunity din. Titignan pa. Have you okay. thought of opening a weightlifting gym, you and Julius? Because I'm sure maraming gusto magpaturo sa inyo to be mentored by both of you, not just Filipinos, but I'm seeing a lot of Asian countries. Have you thought of that? Julius? Um, well, yes. I mean, eventually, yes. We want to um, be able to um, make a, you know, a weightlifting academy. Um, but it's, it's not, you know... I think it's not going to just be focused on weightlifting. We want to use weightlifting to supplement other sports because we know that weightlifting is also very beneficial for development of strength for other sports. So, you know, um, it's, it's something in the plan and in the, in the works and, um, you know, hopefully in the new future, it's something we can achieve. But of course, uh, right now we still want to continue the advocacy and continue to do what we can while Hadalyn's able to um, perform at her highest level. Hi, Dilin, at this point, okay, nakakuha ka na ng gold medal. Hawak-hawak mo kanina yung gold medal mo. Yeah. Yan. Okay. Um, has it sunk in the fact that ikaw yung unang-unang nakakuha ng Olympic gold para sa ating bansa? And previous to this, 21 Olympic appearances ng bansa natin in the Olympics yeah. wow. since 1924. Wala tayong gintong medalya. Ikaw lang ang nakakuha. Has that sunk into you, um, the importance and significance of that and how you have made millions and millions of Filipinos happy and proud? Um, Actually, tanggap ko na. <laughs> Ganun na. Tanggap ko na last Saturday. Uh, Siyempre, nang una, hindi ako makapaniwala na parang hindi totoo eh. Natalunin kong China na nandun ako sa gitna Tapos na, na-play ang Philippine Anthem. Hindi ako kapaniwala na nandito ang gold. Pero kailangan kong paniwalaan eh. Ito na yung realidad. And uh, sabi ko nga nung after winning gold, uh, after winning silver nung Rio, akala ko medal lang. Ngayon, um, ganun din. Um, yung medal may kagap, uh, may, may katumbas siyang uh, responsibilidad eh. Lalong tumaas lang ang responsibilidad. You know, um, Haidila, I have to say that uh, Diane is actually part sa Buangenya. Oh. Just like you. Because on her mother's side, Farga sila. And uh, the Fargas has come from Zamboanga. Um, and that's why, kayo rin Diane, you have an affinity. Pareho kayong taga Zamboanga. Ako naman ang asawa ko, pinsang buo ni Diane. Kanya, yung asawa ko, nambuang genya din. So, yes. my, lolo, <laughs> we have, my lolo is from Zamboanga, so I speak doon dito din da. Marunong ako mag-chabacano. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. okay. you know? Pag, basta di Zamboanga, mapwersa. So, ketal mga di Zamboanga, li. <laughs> yan, yan. Okay. ID. Oh, go ahead, Kimito. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, Coach Julius, um, we were talking here about roots and Zamwanga. Um, your mother is Japanese. Um, when you were in Tokyo during the Olympics, did your relatives reach out to you? Did they also provide you some kind of support uh, in your journey to get Heidelin to win the gold? Oh, well, well basically, my I, I think, well, not, not really. My mom did, though, um, mm-hmm. but she's in Guam. But uh, I... 
I think my auntie and my my grandmother were um, I think they were trying to 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 watch me uh, watch mm-hmm. Heidelin rather not me watch mm-hmm. Heidelin on TV and I think they 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 were able to if I'm not mistaken I spoke to my uh, my auntie the other day and they were so proud and happy and I think they did send their love and support um, yeah. during the competition so iba din yung yung pamilya and of course in Guam I'm sure your family there was ecstatic with this major achievement you were once a weightlifter yourself performing for Guam um, yes. um, the yes. transition from being an active performer in weightlifting to a coach was that difficult or was that a natural thing well i mean i think be- before i became a weightlifter i was already a coach so it just kind of mm-hmm. came hand in hand Um, but of course, I think the toughest part is retiring from competing and transitioning just to coaching. But of course, um, it's part of the game. You know, sometimes um, we're better, um, we're a lot happier. Or sometimes, I think for me at least, coaching was was uh, I was a better coach than I was a lifter. So okay. I used now as a coach. I use my training and me lifting as a means to inspire my athletes that I work with and to show them that look, you know, I'm not I'm not elite or anything, but I'm doing my best to make sure that I can be a good example for you. So that's what I do my weightlifting for: is to stay active and to be a good um, role model for my athletes. Coach, how much more do you lift than Heidelin? <laughs> <laughs> uh, as far as the snatch I think I'm still there but the clean and jerk she's already um, well I mean you know I've the reason why I, I, I had to retire was because of injury so I can only lift to a certain extent now at this point so as far as clean and jerks I'm not very um, I'm not very capable from a health perspective but mm-hmm. Heidelin actually yeah if, if If let's just say Heidelin's Olympic lifts mm-hmm. will already beat me at this point. In wow! <laughs> All right. Yes. Yeah. Because okay. every time we clean and jerk, she, I know she will win, so I try to win in the snatch. Here's something from Tina Frias. Big hugs to you both, Hides and Julius from Mix G, all the way from Malaysia. Hello, oh, Mix yes. yes. G. Happy oh. birthday to you. Filipino po yeah. na tumulong sa amin sa Malaysia. Ah, okay, okay. Hi, di, di ba ang daming Pilipino na nagtumulong sa iyo, sinasabi mo dati from Malaysia. Can you maybe you want to tell us kung gaano ka I mean, how did the Filipino community sa Malaysia help you when you were there for over a year and a half? Uh, for me, um tumulong sila eh. Um nagbigay um nagtumulong sila by giving us connection doon sa Malaysia. Like, kinonek nung time na wala kami mapagte-trainingan, na tumulong sila, maghanap kami kung saan nga kapag-training, tapos tumulong sila. You know, yung, yung makapagsalita lang ng Tagalog, marak- malaking bagay na eh. Lalo-lalo na pag nasa, nasa Malaysia ka sa ibang bansa. Tapos, um, makapag kain lang ako ng bagoong, makakain lang ako ng Filipino food doon, masayang-masaya na ako at yun ang naibigay nila sa akin na uh, kahit nasa Malaysia ko, ramdam kong nasa Pilipinas pa rin ako kasi nakapagsalita ako ng Tagalog, nakakain ako ng Pilipino food. So salamat sa mga Pilipino dyan sa Malaysia at salamat din sa mga tumulong sa amin sa Malaysia, sina Sir Janos, Auntie Rapida, saka yung Malaysia Weightlifting Association, thank you sa pagtulong sa amin. Saka wipers, thank you. Ah, Wait, saka, you... Ay, go ahead. Philippine Embassy sa Malaysia, si Vice Consul, salamat po sa tulong na binigay nyo. Sa pag-connect sa amin, sa si Tita Elsie, salamat po sa pag-connect sa amin sa ano yung para magkaroon kami ng vaccine sa AstraZeneca. Ito, mm. meron pang ano, message from Arnold Pornea. Met Hello, Arnold. Julius. I did message to Heidelin in Melaka. <laughs> Hello, Arnold. Thank you oh, so much. Yung, yung mga Pinoy sa Malaysia are tuned in to Play It Right TV because nung nalaman nila that you will be guests here with Coach Julius, arami na gano'n, nag-log in. Yes, Grabe, so. Dibig Kinito, we have seen it time and time again kung paano mag, 
uh, mag-unite at sumaporta yung Filipino community wherever they are all over the world. We've seen it, diba, sa mga atleta natin that are competing abroad. Yung simple magbigay lang ng pagkain, like rice, minsan sa mga non-rice eating countries, that's already a big thing. But wait, you mentioned bagoong. Julius, is is Heidelin allowed to eat bagoong? Why she was... <laughs> Pwede, pwede. With, uh, mango, Ayun naman pala eh. Pwede. Yeah. Mango. Mango. Oh, mabait ka naman pala. <laughs> so, kundi. Pero yun yung mga, um, mga pagkain na hindi ko na kinahin nung nagsaseryoso na ako. Kasi pag may bagoong, tapos may may manga, hindi na ako, hindi ako makakapigil eh. Kaya hindi na ako bumili. <laughs> nagsaseryoso na ako. Bigay mo na lang kay Coach Julius siya nalang kakain. Hindi siya kumakain ng bagoong eh. Mabaho. No, I like it. I like it with curry curry. Masarap. You know, curry curry. Curry curry is good. I didn't wanted to go a li- talk a little bit about your nutrition kasi alam ko si Janet Aro was played a big part to your success at sabi nyo nga after the Asian Championships kailangan nandyan si Janet dito sa Olympics. Um, before nag, you showed me yung iniinom mo before workout, can you share with us kung ano yun? Um, or secret? Uh, secret na yun eh, gano'n no. So, <laughs> atlo yung iniinom ko, tubig, um, tapos coffee, tapos yung recovery drink. Yes, and ayun, um, bakit napaka-importante ni Miss Jeanette doon sa laro? Kasi yung dalawang coaches ko, si Coach Julius at saka si Coach Gao, sila yung taga-load, tapos sila din ang taga-strategize kung anong numbers, ganun. Tinitignan din yung kalaban sila yun. Si Ma'am Jeanette, siya yung taga-bigay sa akin ng tubig, kape, tapos yung recovery drink. So, yun. Pag, pag si Coach Julius, ga, ah, pag si Coach Gao gagawa nun, eh, hin, mahirap eh, kasi hindi yung trabaho niya. Kailangan mabilis eh. Mabilis ka doon sa likod ng warm up eh kung medyo natagalan yung recovery ko medyo mahirap din yung buhat ko. Then yung isa din si Ma'am Jeanette din yung um nagre-remind sa akin na you are ready guys, you are ready, you are ready. And yun. Siya ang nag-assist din sa akin kasi sina Coach Julius and Coach Gao, sila yung talagang busy doon sa sila yung nakipag strategize eh. Mm. Yeah, so it was really good that ang sabi mo nga na feel mo yung kulang talaga kayo sa Asian Championships kasi masyadong busy yeah. backstage doing so many things. Yeah. So, mahirap kasi Yeah, mahirap kasi nung Asian Championship, ako yung ako na yung before ng laro, ako lahat nag-prepare ng food ko, ako lahat nag-prepare ng um yung kailangan kong dalhin. Mahirap yun eh. Ako mag Although nagbigay na siya ng instruction, mahirap yun na para sa akin na ito bang gagawin? Ang daming iisipin, di ba? Mas okay na yung focus ako sa gagawin. Sasabihin ko lang, ma'am, recovery drink, ma'am. Ganon. Eh di mas madali eh. Pag, pag ganon na, di ko alam na, di ba? Um, medyo mahirapan ako sa, uh, ano to, sa... Alam mo yung, kasi yung sa weightlifting, lalong-lalo na sa Olympics, every second count eh. Eh kung mag-iisip pa ako kung ano, ganito, kukunin niyan doon, oh, medyo mahirap yon Kaya buti yeah. na lang ng Jeanette. So dapat ikaw, ang iniisip mo, yung form mo lang, yung anong gagawin mo, hindi mo na kailangan si na Julius and Coach Gao yung nag-aayos ng weight, si, yes, si Jeanette nag, nagbibigay sa'yo ng drink, what you need to eat. But speaking about Coach Gao, Heidelin, can you tell us, uh, totoo ba na uuwi na siya ng China at uh, will, uh, will, won't be training you anymore? Um, yes po, medyo naka, um, nakakahinayang na uwi na si coach, pero kailangan din natin tanggapin na uwi na si coach daw. Kasi 19 months din, hindi. Dalawang taon na rin ata, hindi siya nakauwi sa, sa China at alam mo, uh, may pandemic at kailangan niya makasama yung family niya. And yung tatay niya rin, sabi niya 94 na ata yung tatay niya eh. Mm. So, uh, who is going to be your chief trainer for your next competition, which is the World champ- uh, World Championships? Am I correct? Um, yes, World Championships, Sea Games. Um, coach Julius will be the head coach for the Team HD. Yes, pero maghanap din kami ng um, assistant coach na tutulong sa amin. 
Kasi kailangan namin eh. Wow, so Coach Julius, you're gonna be now the the head coach. Are you up for it? Um, well, you know, it's it's um, it's a lot of pressure, but um, I know in the pandemic we we had to wear a lot of uh, hats, right? Um, so uh, you know, uh, Coach Gao really um, taught me a lot, um, taught me a lot, and you know, it's I think. It's going to be a challenging one, but you know I'm I'm the type that's up for challenges, and I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Um, I uh, it's not going to change how hard I work. I'll continue to work hard, and um, it'll be a, a a really nice challenge to take on. <laughs> so we'll see how we progress. Tell us your world championships. Ah, uh, November to December, po ate. Ah, November. Okay. Well, the end. We we've reached reached the forty five minute mark. And uh, this is the longest interview we've had with Coach uh, Julius and Heidelin. I hope you enjoyed your mga questions okay. namin dito yan. Um, it's also Parang because... Parang kulang po, dami ka pong gustong tanangin. May baka oh. party na lang next time. And we've known you so many years. Ever since, ako personally, first time when I met you, Heidelin, nung bubisita ako sa Rizal Memorial at uh, napag-usapan namin yung natin, yung pagbaba mo from, uh, from 58 to 53. And... From that point on, um, you've always been always part of my heart. And the same thing with Diane. But Diane, before we close, maybe we should ask them one last question from each of us before we give them the floor for their final message. My last question is, can you share with us your devotion to the Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal that so many Filipinos are now tuned in to the miracle of that medal. Can you just share with us? Um, aminin ko po, uh, binigay po to ng kaibigan ko, si Sir David Panlilio. Uh, inadala niya kay Ma'am Jeanette noong July 18. So, ayun, nung ginamit ko to, it, um, nung, since July 18, kasi sabi niya na um, parang protection ko rin to, kasi nga may COVID eh, around everywhere then, um, para sa akin, it reminds me all the people na nag-alay ng pagdadasal at nag-alay ng, ano yun, nubina. Tapos, nung laro ko, especially nung laro ko, it really reminds me na may nagdadasal at panatag ako na ito yung pangarap na binigay sa akin ni God na, um, ano bang masabi ko na, parang, alam mo yun, um, as a Catholic, um, lumaki ako as Catholic and hanggang sa naging close ako kay God nung na pumasok ako sa the feast then um, hindi ko din inakala na alam mo yun, ma mabibigyan ko ng meaning ito na alam mo yun, ma maging sign of uh, faith ito for, for, for all of us lalong lalo na sa Pilipino so baka ginamit ako ni God to, to give all, alam mo yun, mabigyan ng pag-asa lahat ng Pilipino at wag mawala ng pag-asa sa kay God at kay Mama Mary. Thank you. And I think we might have lost Diane. Diane, nasaan ka? Hello? Naku, biglang daw wala si Diane. Um, <laughs> Coach Julius, um, we'll ask you for your final message to uh, all your Filipino fans who believe in you. Um, can you just uh, um, reach out to your to, to the fans, not only of Heidelin, but also your own fans? Oh, I didn't know I have. Oh. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, Be believe. Oh, believe. Uh, yeah. Yes. Claim it. Claim it. Yeah. <laughs> know, claim it. Uh, um, maraming, maraming salamat po. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying you're binigay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. What I'm trying. Yeah. Thank you so much for your support. I'm learning Tagalog, so please bear with me. Please understand me. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for your support um, to Team HD. Um, thank you for believing in us and always uh, praying for us. Uh, you know, we wanted to really do this for our country and represent and do our best. And I'm um, just so grateful and happy that you guys are with us and always keep us in your prayers. Thank you so much, Paul. 
Thank you. Well, we're waiting for Diane to come back in because I'm sure she'll want to ask her last question for sure. you. But, uh, Gusto ko lang balikan yung ganun. Gusto ko balikan yung faith. Uh, siguro nung time na yun na uh, I do my best in training, then I just have to do my best in competition. Then after then I just have to, God will do the rest. And that's why the prayers will come in and, you know, um, doon, nai, naipasok yung faith ko kay God. Then, nung time na yun, doon ako naniniwala na kaya ko eh. Naging panatag ako dahil mm -hmm. sa pain ng mga tao. Malaking bagay yung sinabi mo kanina, Heideline, that ang pakiramdam mo, ang Panginoon ang nagbigay sa'yo ng parang, parang ikaw ang naging paraan niya to to reach out to those who will need faith, especially sa pandemya. Yes. Diane, you're back. Come on. What's your yeah, last question? Twitter, you turn. know, I wanted to, I just wanted to uh, ask Julius and Heidelin because I know it's been such a frenzy since nanalo kayo. And I would like to ask uh, Julius, what would you like to say to Heidelin? Can you talk to her right now? I mean, you've probably had your conversations, but what would you like to tell her? Talk to her right now. Talk to her right now. I know you're in separate rooms, but, you know, sometimes when you're so busy with, you know, so many people talking to you, you hardly have time to actually speak to each other so what would what would you like to tell her now um you know, thank you thank you for believing in me and my coaching and um everything that we worked so hard for the last how many years um you know the pandemic really put a lot of things on hold uh push a lot of things back and um you know i think it just made this journey even more sweeter um Thank you for working hard, for believing in me, Coach Gao, Ma'am Jeanette, Doc Karen. Thank you for believing in Team HD and also more importantly, believing in yourself. Because we wouldn't have gotten to this point if you didn't believe in yourself. And, um, you know, I just want to say I'm proud of you. Uh, and, um, you know, I hope that with our future competitions, we can continue to find success uh, with Team HD together with you. Yes. Wow. So, well, you're, so you're, you're so Mama. serious always, Julio. You're so serious. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Gilly, I, am, how I, do I, you I don't know. Smile. Huh? <laughs> how do you make my logging serious? <laughs> yeah. I saw the pictures of um after kung manalo, nakita ko kahit nakamas siya. Nakasmile siya. Sabi ko, first time kung makita, nakasmile. Oh, ikaw rin? Oh, hi, Dilly. What would you like to tell Julius? I remember after you won the Asian Games, sabi mo, ang lucky, ang naging lucky sa'yo, yung lipstick na pinigay niya sa'yo, na sinuot mo during the Asian Games. <laughs> what would you like to tell Julius after winning the gold medal in the Tokyo Olympics? Um, thank you so much for being there. Uh, we've been through a lot. Um, yung pandemic, sobrang, alam mo yan, um, it, but uh, it gives us uh, more time to prepare for this, uh, our goal as a person, our goal with the, together with the Team HD, and I'm thankful that we able to make it. Thank you so much also for supporting me, supporting me, for believing in me, and doing your best to be best you. You know, um, you, we know everyone knows it that I really have a high standard as an athlete and I want this and good thing uh, you want also this and the team HD want this and you all are keep learning keep growing and I'm thankful that you know you keep pushing me to reach my dream and you know I can I can't make it if you guys are not there so I'm really thankful for being there Super kayong kabibes, kayong dalawa. Oh, Julius. Do we expect wedding bells soon? <laughs> um, yeah, it's in the works. It's in the works. Okay. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the guy had to answer. Oh, wait. There's some. There's a comment there. Uh, Kinito, can you read it? Nakaka. Yeah, oh, yeah, so, go ahead. Go ahead. 
Go, go. Dayan. Hindi uh, ka masyad. Nakaka-inspire yung relationship nyo. Relationship goal ni Ate Heidelin and Kuya Julius. Wow. Mga ba ba? From Arnold Pornea. Long hair. Mother Heidelin. <laughs> See you, mother. <laughs> What's the first thing you're gonna do when you get out? Um... Train. <laughs> oh. train now. Train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the training? Lockdown. Di ba? Um, Lockdown. Yeah, in the room. Train in the room. Yeah. In the room. Yeah. Yeah. Bring the barbell that uh Philippine Sports Commission um provide here in resorts role. Yes. Uh, resorts so role. Thank you. Yeah, thank thank you. Res um um Thank you, PSE, for providing the barbell and yeah. Well, Diane, almost one hour na tayo. Uh, we've taken so much time from Coach uh, Julius and Heidelin. We know you guys are so busy, even late at night. Baka meron pa kayong scheduled Zoom pakatapos dito. But uh, thank you for always giving us the time, Heidelin. Uh, we've seen you through all these years in your journey. Um, we love you. We support you. And you can always count on uh, Diane and I to be with you all the way. And the entire Filipino nation is with you. So congratulations. Congratulations. We're so happy for you. We're so proud of you. And we hope to be invited to the when the wedding bells ring. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you again. So Thank all. you, guys. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> Okay, Diane, wow. Oh, oh, what an interview. Ito, umaabot na tayo ng isang oras. Um, I, I, the time went by so fast, no? Parang yeah, I felt you know, like... I, I, I just mean, hope that our, our viewers uh, enjoyed the, our conversation. Um, you know, it's, it, it makes us so, so proud. And we're so comfortable in talking with these athletes. And yeah. I think that, that's what we want to share with the fans. These athletes, we want to bring to you and for you to see them as human beings, not just athletes from a distance performing on stage, but as fellow Filipinos who give us so much happiness and so much pride because they sacrifice so much, they work so hard. Ay, nako, grabe, grabe. Yeah, well, you know, personally, I'm really super happy for Heidelin because Parang, di ba, Kinito, all these years we saw how she won, but she also had a lot of self-doubt. And I'm just so happy because, you know, it gives all of us Filipinos hope that no matter what we're going through, whether it's a sports challenge, whether it's a health challenge, whether it's a financial challenge or a relationship challenge, that we should, that we should never give up and continue mm -hmm. to believe, continue to work hard, and continue to... Uh, listen to the people who love us and who who mean the who mean the best for us, and to continue to reach out for help. If there's one thing that Heidelin did, Kinito, is she always asked. She always asked for help. I remember she would say, "Oh, I need my nutritionist. I need my psychologist. I I need this. I need that." Because, like she said, she had high standards for herself. So, well, I know Sobrang. Sobrang inspired tayong lahat with the win of Heidelin. And, you know, what, whatever it is we're, we want to achieve in life, let's take it one step at a time. Diba? Because as she has proven, dreams do come true. You can hold that gold medal in your hand even after, so, after 16 years, right? Wow. So very well said. So very well said, Diane. Um, and on that note, mga kaibigan, we'd like to thank our sponsor, ASICS Philippines, the official sportswear of the Philippine delegation to the Tokyo Olympics. And, you know, one thing about ASICS, we're wearing ASICS right now. It's yes, not just it's all ASICS. Up, but it's all the accessories, the shoes, the footwear. It's just absolutely first class. And we want to invite you to uh, go over to the nearest ASICS store, um, and choose your merchandise. And ASICS Philippines has created a delegation wear ranging uh, that range uh, with a well, sorry with a wear range so that Filipino fans are able to support the team from afar during the Tokyo Olympics. So you can check out the delegation wear collection in this link below. So 
be like a Filipino athlete, wear ASICs, and, uh, you know, you can all be part of the Philippine Olympic family. Let's enjoy, let's celebrate as one proud Filipino nation wearing ASICs. Yep. Super favorite naman ng ASICs. It's not, it doesn't only look good, it makes you feel good. And we believe it makes you play it right. Thank you so much to all our viewers for watching. We hope you'll join us in our next episodes. We still have so much to bring you from the Tokyo Olympics. It's been such an experience today. We followed uh, Yuka and Bianca. We walked 18 holes in the, how, how hot was it, Kenito? 45 degree heat. And yes, I think 90% humidity, but it was worth it. Uh, of course, uh, Bianca is in the top 10. And they will continue their second round tomorrow. It's actually a super early start, 6.30 a.m. The venue for the golf is Medio Malayo. It's like two hours away from Tokyo. But it's really worth it. And also Bianca and Yuka, Kanina, as they told Kenito and I, they want to thank all the Filipinos because they can feel your love. Continue to send them messages because it super inspires them to do their best. And that's the schedule. Um, for tomorrow, we also have boxing, Carla Paalam versus Tanaka. That will be for a slot in the finals. Both Paalam and Tanaka are assured of a bronze. They're going for a sure silver and possibly a gold. And at 2.03 at p.m., that's Manila time, there will be the men's middleweight semifinals versus Kersniak of, of Ukraine against uh, Yumir Marshall and Kersniak has not lost in his last 61 fights dating back to 2016. So this is going to be a big test for Ymir Marshall. Marshall wins this fight, then he goes to the finals, and that's a guaranteed silver. Yeah, so Kenita, ah, so I, want, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to yeah, I wanted to ask you, what do you think Carlo, uh, first, what do you think Carlo needs to, to do against the Japanese? We saw him fight. Well, I thought Carlo pulled the upset of the Olympics in beating the defending uh, Olympic gold medalist and reigning world champion Zoyrov of Uzbekistan. I mean, for him to do that via a split technical second round decision was something not too many people actually expected, but he dominated the first round, got all the judges to agree with him. And in the second round, continuing his domination until the referee stopped the contest. They went to the scorecards and Carlo won. I think if he just fights the way he did, aggressive, precise, um, with a lot of movement, he'll be able to take care of Tanaka. Um, but for what about, Michelle, you, what about you, Mir? Yeah, you said that yeah, well, uh, Ukrainian hasn't lost since 2016. That's right. Uh, well, for Marshall, uh, Coach Don Abnett said we can expect not just the knockout artist, but the boxer. So we'll see if he can adapt to that style. Um, not just a slugger, not just a puncher, but a boxer who can use the ring, use distance and space, and use movement to be able to beat Kersniak. So uh, two boxing matches that we're certainly looking forward to. All those boxers, um, the, the semifinalists, including the opponents of the Filipinos, are short of a bronze. But we want more. We want that shot of the gold. And Paalam and Marshall will go for it tomorrow. Well, let's continue to pray for our athletes and believe, although they've done already phenomenal for a delegation of 19 athletes, Kenito, we have four medals, a gold, a silver, two sure bronze medals. And we're hoping that those two bronze medals will turn into silver and gold after tomorrow's boxing matches and then of course yuka and bianca of four rounds of golf and we're hoping also for a medal from golf well that's about it for us on play it right for this evening well we also want to remind all of our sports fans continue to follow us on our facebook page on uh, twitter on instagram and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel play it right tv is here for you and we hope to be able to connect you even more closely to the athletes, to the coaches, to the trainers, everyone involved in Philippine sports. And we know you love sports and we're here to bring sports to you and get you in the middle of the action. Well, I am Diane. <laughs> and I am Kenita Hanson. And we are here to play it, play it right. right. 
See you next time. Bye.